Ahem. Is this thing on? <laughs> hey, it's Graham Breitenstein, the host of This Week with Drunk Astrology, the podcast. And you know, at the top of every new year, it can be so easy to fall into a mindset that's like, well, it's a new year. I guess I'll like do some goals. I don't know, a couple friends are doing dry January. Maybe I should do dry January. But you know what? That's not you, and that is most certainly not me. You know, we start 2024 with Mercury, the planet of our thinking mind, stationing direct. So that means the planet that rules the way our brain functions is stopped. So we experience some brain fog, a lack of clarity. We might be a little hungry for change, a little hungry to set some goals, but we're not functioning at our full potential. That's okay, because your astrologer here has created a free resource for you to clear through your mental muck. I'm calling it the Manifest Big in 2024 journal, and it is absolutely free, 0.00. Free 99. This thing is full of science backed prompts around goal setting and astrological insights because the timing of setting your goals is just as important. And that's exactly what astrology teaches us. So, to get it, you're going to go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. And in less than a minute, you're going to download your PDF and you're going to start getting to work. And here's what's cool. In 2024 and for the next 20 years, Pluto, the planet of power, it's the source of our power as a collective, changes into Aquarius. So that means the source of power for all of us to tap into lies in Aquarian themes. What are Aquarian themes, you might be asking? Aquarian themes are community, collaboration, and communication. You are not going to be working through this journal alone. No, 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 no. You and I are going to be working together to fill this out and to manifest our most amazing year ahead. And here's the challenge. I implore you to bring in people that you admire, people that you respect, people that you love, people that you care for, whether that's family, friends, your partners, your co-workers, your teammates. Bring them into this process. The more we share this resource, the more we are all tapping into the power that is available to us. It is no longer the solo Capricorn journey. Pluto's been there, done that since 2008. For the next 20 years, our power lies in community. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do this together. We're going to share this with the people that we love, that we respect, that we want to see win. So again, go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. It is also, if you scroll up, the first link in the show notes. Download that PDF in less than a minute. And you and I are going to do this together. Don't miss this opportunity to create your most amazing year You're going to thank me later, I promise. So now that you got your journal, why don't we hop into this week? We dance for a pre-record we love, a pre-record we live for a pre-record we love it, we love it, just give us our information. That's what I imagine you all saying to me right now. Graham, I know you might be out of town, but you better be giving me my cosmic information. And don't you worry That's exactly what I'm doing. So, but I am going to let you know that this podcast episode and next week's as well is pre-recorded. So at the time of this pre-record, it's the day of the Virgo full moon. So for me, it's March 18th, but for you, it's actually March 21st. So I will say to you, hello from the past and hello to you in the future. (laughs) That's right, folks. It is the day of the Virgo full moon. And even when you press play on this, we are ripe in that Virgo full moon energy. So this is a time for culmination, culmination on the work front, culmination on your health and wellness, culmination on just 
a need to balance your spiritual life, your spiritual beliefs, your fantasies, and what's just friggin' real. All right, Virgo energy, it is an earth sign. It is service work. So let me tell you something all around me, and probably for you too, people are having work stories popping like crazy. Opportunities, interviews, emails. Hey, we saw your resume and portfolio on Indeed.com. What do you, what you got? Did we think that you're perfect for this job? You know, send in your application, yada, yada, yada. Everyone's got some kind of work story popping, culminating. Think back to September 6th through the 20th of 2021, and you're going to see, like, okay, what started in that time frame, what took place in that time frame, and now the story's culminating, and it is ending. There's a completion when you have a full moon. Yes, people, people run a little more emotional, a little more sensitive, a little more dramatic. <sighs> what are you going to do? Um, but that's full moon material. That's just full moon stuff. And you're just gonna, you're gonna allow, you're gonna allow yourself to go through the fields. You're gonna allow the people around you that you care about to go through the fields. That is full moon stuff. And we are in this for this week and into next week until we get to that Aries new moon. And speaking of happy Aries season, let me tell you why Aries season and the spring equinox is just so something to embrace and something to be excited about. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. So with that comes the energy of new beginnings. It is the energy and the experience all around you of flowers blooming, misty mornings, and you just see all the growth and the vegetation. and every The world starts coming back to life around you nature starts coming back to life around you and you start coming back to life what airy season signifies is that we have now wrapped around the entirety of the zodiac from the sun's perspective and we're back at the beginning so that means you have you've seen all you've needed to see you've experienced all that you needed to experience and you felt (laughs) with all the pisces energy in the sky you have felt everything that you needed to feel and now you get to take it all you get to round it all up you get to gather it all up and say thank you so much for all that you taught me thank you so much for all that you've done thank you so much for all the years and all the thank you for the heartache thank you for the great times great thank you for the bad times and guess what i'm ready to begin again Oh, if you don't know that song by Taylor Swift called Begin Again, please listen to Begin Again because it is, it's a hopeful song, and that's what Aries season's coming around to do, to give you that hope for spring, that hope for new beginnings, that hope for a rebirth, right? Pisces season's about recharging and regenerating for what is now happening, which is the sun in Aries, where we have this whole boost of growth and and just positivity in this in this opportunity to actually be born again and to come back into ourselves and say what do I want and how do I want to proceed and what's my strategy when we enter airy season we're talking about the energy of Mars which I think is going to come as a welcome relief to you and to me and to all of us Because now we get out of Neptune's sea where we're dreamy, we're lofty, we're emotional, we're sensitive. And we're really having to process a lot. And of course, the sun, Jupiter, Neptune, all in Pisces has just been a whole lot of water. Just too much water. Um, And now if you've got a lot of water in your chart, you can be like, yeah, well, this is home territory to me. But for those of us that are, I'll speak for myself, water deficient in their chart, I'm like, this is too many feelings. This is too much to process. This is too much coming up at once. I'm not fit to handle all this kind of emotion and sensitivity and just like swimming in the deep abyss. I can hang out for a second. My third house is ruled by Scorpio. I can hang out for a second. But baby... I can't stay too long. I, I just can't. Can you? Can you stay too long? Oof. I'm just, I'm just, that's, that's not it. 
that's just not it. Um, and not for me. <laughs> so Aries season comes and just kind of gives us a nice whoosh of energy because now we're talking to Mars. We're out of the Neptunian sea and, you know, having to look at what we buried underneath and the things that are spiritually holding us back. And now we get to go, now let's do something about it. Let's take charge. I'm taking my life in my hands and I'm in the driver's seat now and I'm going to trailblaze forward. So that's a nice, I think a nice, um, I think it's going to be a nice switcheroo. And you will feel, if you haven't already, by the time you hear this and press play, if you haven't already felt that whoosh of energy, um, it's coming because now we're we're just gonna talk to we're gonna talk to Mars we're gonna talk to new beginnings we're gonna talk to warmth and heat and passion and sex that's all comes up when Aries season's around so you know if you've been feeling a little lackluster on the energy the motivation the drive um, a little bit of a sexy time well don't you worry um, Sun and Aries is gonna come and 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 liven you back up and kind of like a defibrillator you know they're gonna come and clear and you're gonna get nuked (laughs) okay (laughs) so just you know pay attention to where you feel that whoosh of energy um because that's gonna be a welcome reprieve from all of what we've been in and so also this week so we have we're living under the the virgo full moon vibes we're living in the sun entering aries which is also the um international astrology day international day for astrology and um, I hope that you chose to like support and you know your astrologers or your astro folk, your cosmic folk, your spiritual folks, um, just as a way to show your appreciation. You know, sometimes it's just by sharing. Sometimes it's just by you know giving a like, giving a follow. Sometimes it's by a don- you know via donation. Sometimes it's booking a reading. Um, whatever you do, show your spiritual folks. Um, now that we're in this. Um, period of time, you know, show show them some L O V E, okay? Because you know, we're here doing the math and science of it all, and we can kind of like make things make sense. But you know, we need we need the support system too. And um... stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, I want to get in your ear real quick. There are a lot of spiritual viewpoints and perspectives that you can subscribe to. You know, there's astrology, numerology, feng shui, there's Akashic records, there's past life regressions, there's destiny cards. There is just any number of ways that you can tap into the universe to get insight, to help you create the life you want to live, to create abundance and prosperity. With love and relationships, connection, all those things. And I recognize that there is a lot and that at times it can be overwhelming and it can be hard to figure out who to go to, who can I listen to, who can I trust. So this is why I created the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series. If you're not already listening to it, it's available wherever you're listening to this podcast already, but you can also watch each interview on drunkastro.com. There's a whole page there for it. And I've linked the series in the show notes. So in this series, one, I want you to I want you to know all the d- different tools that you can use to manifest big this year because the life that you want, the life that you deserve, it is waiting for you and there are a number of methods to consider, spiritual and non-spiritual. Okay, I'm in this series, I'm not only talking to Tali from the Astro Twins, not only talking to Christina Hollinger, a feng shui expert, about how to feng shui your living space, your workspace, to create a space that is high vibration and that attracts the life you want to live. I'm not only talking to a crystal expert about what crystals are good for the energy of 2024's unique energy. Not only talking to a symbologist, a destiny card reader. Have you ever heard of that? Because I hadn't heard of that until I met um, CJ, who is the destiny card reader I bring into this um, series. Um, I'm not only talking to spiritual folks. I'm talking to an intimacy expert because love and relationships are at the top of a lot of our lists, single or not single. 
we can all learn how to be more intimate with each other, be more authentically expressing ourselves. I'm also talking to Elise Joan, a Beachbody super trainer and longevity expert, because it's not about just creating an amazing life. It's about living a long life, one that you love, one that you want to be healthy for, one that you want to actually stay in for the long haul. So this series is set up to to get you in alignment from all different angles. So if you haven't already, go catch up on the episodes that have already aired. And the new episodes that are coming, every single Wednesday, a new episode will drop until the series is finished. So go back, drunkastro.com. There's a whole page for how to manifest big in 2024. All the videos are there. Watch the interviews. There's a link to this in the show notes. It'll get you right where you need to be. Okay? We're doing this this year. You're doing this this year. Your your um, Manifest Big in 2024 journal, that is the foundation of what you're going to use this year to set goals that you're actually going to achieve. Now, all these other tools in the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, these are all going to enhance your vibe. Enhance the vibe of your living space, your heart set, your mindset, your body set. You are going to be, there's no way by using the Manifest Big in 2024 journal, by tapping into the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, this is all you need. It's all you need. Okay? So in case you haven't got into it, this was just a little reminder. needed to get that in your ear. Let's get back to this episode and keep up this vibration. You know, it's a little bit harder to kind of admit sometimes, especially because I have all the Virgo in my chart, you know, it's just like, oh my gosh, you know, I think I can do it all myself. Um, but, you know, it's nice to have a community around you, all right? Um, so if you're watching this on the YouTube, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think I had a piece of food in my teeth this whole time. <laughs> so sorry for those of you on the YouTube that had to spend 12 minutes looking at something in my teeth. Um, but for those of you on the podcast listening platforms, well, lucky you. You didn't have to see. I don't know what it was, but it, I could feel it. And I don't know if you could see it. So I hope I didn't just bite myself in the foot. But anyway, we're going to move on. <laughs> Also, this week we have Mercury entering Aries. So, of course, the sun did it first, moved into Aries yesterday, the 20th of March, and now on the 27th, Mercury, just after midnight, 12.44 a.m. Pacific time, is going to shift into Aries too. So that that makes a really hot Aries season. Now, when Mercury enters Aries, he goes into warrior mode um, because now he's answering to Mars, and Mars is all hot and bothered and riled up. So he's fiery, he's passionate, and he can be argumentative. So you do want to kind of watch, you know, watch the watch the dramatic flares and watch for people to get all, you know, just a little bit overly passioned um, because when Mercury's answering to Mars, he just gets real, he gets real hot and bothered. And now let's see, let's go ahead and move. Now the only um, bulletin board items that I will mention are that uh, so yours truly while you're listening to this and or watching it and or however you choose to to take it all in these days um, because now drunk astrology is on the YouTube and cosmic conversations are coming very soon so get the to the YouTubes and hit that subscribe button because there's going to be some really I already have so many ideas for these cosmic conversations so. A lot of things are going to be happening, especially those of you that want to learn a little bit more about astrology and little tidbits and little sound bites um, so that you can start understanding your chart on a deeper level, you know, just as you go along and as you listen to this podcast and, and other, you know, as you absorb your cosmic information, just little things that are going to help you, help guide you along the way. Um, you're going to want to be on the YouTubes. So... I, yours truly right now is out of town, but starting April 1st, we're back in black and ready to go. That means, though, that there's only a two-week window from 1st 
of April to the 16th, where you can still get your 2022 Planet by the Planets reading. This is a yearly reading. It is a comprehensive. Most clients are getting a 19 to 21 page PDF document. Um, that breaks down the major themes of your year, breaks down the major dates in your year, standout aspects that that when I look at your chart, there's just certain things that are like, oh, oh, all the biggies. We discuss all the biggies. Um, I've been doing some of my friends lately. I'm, I'm definitely I know I have um, a couple that are going to um, that are happening when I get back. So I just want to just encourage you that. The Planet by the Planets reading is going to go away on April 16th, and it won't come back until 2023. So get thee to the reading section of DrunkAstro.com and book your reading if that's something that's on your mind because um, I just did one before this recording, and you know we uncover a lot. And you can really, you can really see what's working with you, what's working for you, and what might take a little bit more extra work or extra time or extra effort um, based on what the planets are doing in your chart. So we will be discussing that, and you have two weeks, basically. I mean, you can book it now, um, but it won't. I'm not back for readings until April 1st, so, you know, get the get, get it all figured out. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and talk about the moon. Uh, we're going to talk about the moon for the week of March 21st through the 27th, 2022. And then we'll talk about the planets and a couple of other things that um, I have written down that I just want to bring to your attention. So on Monday the 21st, the moon is in Scorpio and Bay AB. It is a busy moon. Okay, it makes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Read them and weep. Seven aspects, and of those seven, one, two, three, four, five are stressful, adjusting, and separative. So you're going to watch on Monday, the 21st, you're going to watch for a lot of activity. The moon is really busy, just like it was last week. Everybody wrote in to me saying, "Um, yeah, you put on the newsletter. The first line was, the moon is busy this week, and so are you, and I wasn't playing around. How many of you had to make you know completely just change the nature of your week oh my hands up Mm -hmm. yep for sure happened to me too you know even though i'm your astrologer it doesn't mean that this stuff doesn't affect me too because oh my gosh i have had to change my entire week every single day (laughs) no biggie no biggie it's totally fine totally fine um but yes so monday the scorpio moon is super busy on tuesday the 22nd the scorpio moon goes void at 901 a.m all the times they give you are Pacific time, so make sure you adjust for your time zones. Void at 9.01 a.m. with a sextile to Pluto, so that does make Sunday the 20th, Monday the 21st, and Tuesday until 9.01 a.m. Positive forward motion, working well within power structures and, and um, with authorities. That's, it's, it's a great, it's a, it's a nice energy. Um, nice closing aspect, so that's nice. Then at 11.59, so just a few hours later in the morning, the moon enters Sagittarius. It has a lovely trine to the sun at 3.52 p.m. Then on Wednesday the 23rd, the Sag moon makes one, two, three, four, five, five aspects. So it's, again, it's a, it's a busy moon. But of those, two are stressful and separative, and the other three are flowy and supportive. So the Sag Moon, which is also the day that my friend David Lee Brandt gets married, which is why I'm out of town um, for my friend's wedding. Um, I'll still be doing, you know, your horoscopes on Twitter every single day. Don't worry. It's all being preloaded. Don't worry. Your weekly horoscopes are coming in your mailbox. Don't worry. All of it's pre-recorded. Um, but yes, that is the day that my friends get married and I'm really, I'm really excited. I'm happy to be with them. So happy wedding day to David in India and I'll be there because I'm in the bridal party or in the grooms, I'm groomsman, grooms. Yeah, I'm a groomsman, not a bridal party. I'm in the grooms party. I was not made for this stuff. (laughs) And it's also the day that Mercury and Neptune conjunct each other. So it's just like so fabulous. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um, Then on Thursday, the 24th, the Sagittarius moon goes void at 5.59 a.m. with a square to Mercury. So that does make that Sag moon. Um, You know, closing aspects are stressful. So, you know, what wedding day isn't stressful? 
Um, but you know, so that's just a little stress, you know, stress and communication, um, organization, you know, just getting, just getting all the like logistics together. Sag Moon wants to like fly and have fun and party. And then Mercury's like, no, but we have, we, no, but we have to do this and you have to do this and you have to do this. So that's just the vibe of that Sag Moon from Tuesday afternoon till Thursday morning at 5.59 a.m. Then on Thursday the 24th, the moon enters Capricorn at 2.54 p.m., and it is in Capricorn for the rest of Thursday, Friday the 25th, only making two aspects, one of which is a trine to Uranus, so nice, unexpected, flowy, like, you know, that could be like some fun or some unexpected um, things on the work front, some news you want to hear that you weren't expecting, um, just good good news, good changes, good breakthroughs, uh, potentially, you know, really good ideas can come, especially on the work front, can come on Friday afternoon. Saturday the 26th, the moon is in Capricorn and going void at 4.59 p.m. with a sextile to Mercury. So positive, positive, positive. That Capricorn moon from Thursday afternoon until Saturday afternoon is lovely, lovely, lovely. Great time for communications. Great time for making advancements on the work front. Um, Consider your goals. Consider your dreams. And make sure that you're committing. It's a great Great time to make commitments. Um, those of you that are having a lot of work stuff come up with this Virgo full moon. Could be a time when an offer's on the table or when you actually kind of commit to something. Um, or, just, or just forward advancement. So that's really nice. So then at 5.55 p.m. on Saturday, the moon enters Aquarius. The moon is in Aquarius the rest of Saturday, all day Sunday, the 27th, and it goes void at 7.11 a.m. Monday, the 28th, with a conjunction to Saturn. So that conjunction to Saturn, um, conjunctions go either way. And what this kind of conjunction can do is say, okay, I'm going to work positive with with authority figures, um, or there's like, you know, conjunctions are a meetup. So it's like an ending and a beginning. So it could just, it's its really like a toss-up. Cosmic toss-up, is it is it good? Is it bad? Uh, I don't know. Um, but it can go either way. But the Aquarius is all about connecting and community and expansion. So, you know, as long as you're choosing that, choosing those themes, by all means. Um, and friends. So it's a great weekend to, like, be with your friends. It's, it's, it's really nice energy. Now, as far as the planets go... Mars has a nice sextile to Chiron on 2 p.m., so that's just a little, it's a little bit of a wounding, but it's like a positive action, you know, so Chiron doesn't always have to be a pain point. Uh, He does in your chart indicate where, like, traumas and triggers and all of those things are, but when there's nice connections from, from the personal planets to Chiron and they're flowy and supportive, this is like, okay, your pain point is also your inspiration and motivation point. So, you know, it's a chance to rework your strategy with, you know, your your triggers or with your traumas, with your pain. Um, so working productively, that's really nice. That's 2 p.m. on Monday the 21st. On Tuesday the 22nd, there's a Mars-Uranus square. So on the 19th, a couple days ago, Venus had her square to Uranus. So that was kind of an unexpected change. Squares can be stressful, but they just require action. So it's just like, all right, this is a call to action. Do something. This is also a call to action because we're talking about Mars. So now adjust your strategy, but it's some kind of new, some kind of like new thing, unexpected twist that you just have to, um, you just got to go with, you know, be flexible. When it's Uranus, you never know what to expect. So just go with it. On Wednesday the 23rd, which is just so nice, you know, we're, we're out of Pisces season, but we have the Mercury-Neptune conjunction, which is just like fantasies come, ugh, just fantasies all just, it's just, it's just beautiful and wonderful energy, like fairy-like energy. Um, there's definitely going to be tears at this wedding. I am so prepared for it. I know that I, especially with how sensitive and teary i've been lately oh gosh wednesday is gonna that's gonna hit so it can be happy tears um you but you might find that you're running emotional you're running a little tired or you're running a little sensitive or you might overdo it on these substances <clears throat> uh so be careful <laughs> but that's at ten forty four a.m and you can go to march 13th when the sun had its conjunction to neptune and now it's time to talk about it to make the commitment um, share your vision with others, um, and just and just dream and float and and just be in the moment and high tide, low tide, go with it. 
just go with the flow on Wednesday the 23rd. It's a beautiful day. Um, let's see. Then on Thursday the 24th, we have the Capricorn quarter moon. And this is at 1037 p.m. at 4 degrees and 33 minutes. So the quarter moon is just typically it's stress, okay? It's a stressful thing and it's pulling on the full moon in Virgo from last week. So you're going to now have to balance your 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 daily actions and your final destination, especially when it comes to professional ambitions, your career goals, and your daily work. This is now, it's like, okay, the quarter moon is a square between the sun and the moon after a newer full moon. And it's, it's a week after. So it's the midpoint between last week's full moon and next week's Aries new moon. Okay, so you're just going to evaluate your professional commitments. You're going to evaluate your personal goals, your mindset, because the sun is looking for you for strategy, because now it's in Aries and it's in Mars, um, or it's answering to Mars. And then the Capricorn energy is like, yes, and this is what this is what I said I wanted. And I was committed. This was my goal. This is what I said I wanted. And now if it, there's an imbalance there. So what is working from the Virgo full moon and what's not working? Strike that balance because this is, this is you know earth energy. And make sure that you're committing to what works for you and what is, what is in the direction of your ultimate goal, your career goals or whatever. And if it's not, you know, be real with yourself and really, and really take stock and look at it. Um, because the, the Virgo energy of the full moon wants you to be taking micro actions each and every day that lead you to your ultimate goal. So this could be a reminder like, okay, is this towards your ultimate goal or is this just something you're just, you're, you're doing like a placeholder. If you're placeholding, then we have we then this might not be the direction this might not be right and you still have a week left of that virgo full moon you can make it right so don't get hung up in the stress but thursday can be a stressful day um on saturday the 26th the mercury has a sextile to pluto at 3:35 in the morning so that is that's really positive flowy action remember um we're talking about uh, all this like mars action 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 Mercury is just on the heels of going into Aries when he has this sextile to Pluto. So it's more like, okay, how do you how do you want to change? How do you want to maneuver? What what do you want to what do you want to do? Because I'm going into Aries tomorrow and I'm going to make it happen. So this is a check-in cuz there's not a lot of earth in the sky. We have 10 planets/asteroids slash asteroids that are in air and fire. So we are dealing with energy and ideas so we're really cerebral and we've got a lot of ideas and we're and we're culminating and we're and we're creating and we've got the energy to back it up but we only have a couple planets in earth we have pluto and capricorn which is grounding everything so mercury sextile to pluto on saturday is like okay this is your last chance we're gonna work together nicely but once i get into aries we're going to have a little bit of contention. So tell me what I need to, to grow now. Tell me what I need to build now. And then I'm going to use this Aries energy to actually build it. And I'm going to do the thing. Um, so that's the vibe there. But yeah, we have Pluto and Capricorn. Now we do have Uranus and Taurus, which yes, Taurus is an Earth sign, but it's Uranus. Uranus blows things up. It's the rebel of all the planets. So we're really breaking foundation. We're really breaking ground and breaking earth with Uranus and Taurus. So we have the North Node in Taurus, which is like, okay, yes, we're, we're moving towards this ground. We're moving towards our foundation and building something beautiful and sustainable and helpful to us. But Uranus is shaking us up whenever he wants to, <laughs> whenever he gets hit. He's like, ooh, yep, yeah, but maybe not that. Or, ooh, you know, how are you going to deal with that change? Like, you know, you got to be flexible. And then Pluto and Capricorn is really the only thing that's like keeping us like steady. But Pluto, again, is alchemical change. So even the Earth we have isn't necessarily giving us enough ground. Everything is like thoughts and ideas and, and just action and energy. So that's nice because we've been, you know, going through a lot of processing and feelings and emotions. But now it's like, oh, my gosh, there's a lot generating. This is a lot of big generating energy. Um, in the sky right now because we have a lack of Earth. Um, and we have two planets, Jupiter and Neptune, holding us down in water. So those are two big planets 
that do provide, you know, who isn't running a little more sensitive and emotional and, you know, being a little empathic this year with all the energy that's going on. You know, it's it's just, it, it's a lot. It's a, it's a lot of heaviness and Jupiter expands. Neptune's really calling the shots this year um, until Jupiter gets to Aries on May 11th. Then we shift into to Mars mode big time, um, which is going to be a huge wave of, of energy and passion. And Mars is the planet of war, so you got to keep that in mind, too, in the background. Um, and the last uh, thing that I would want to mention is that Saturn and Juno are going to meet up this week, um, towards the end of the week. Saturn is, of course, the, the let's get real planet, the reality policeman, the astro dad. Juno is that comet of partnerships and union and marriages. So there is a there's a solidifying of partnerships and relationships energy this week. Um, and just see what comes in. See who comes up. See what relationships and partnerships uh, spanning all types. You know, not just romantic, but friends and family, platonic, professional, collaborators, colleagues. Just there is a there is a let's get real within relationships and partnerships. You know, of course, my friends are getting married. And maybe you have that same story too. And sometimes maybe this is a this is a deepening. This is a, a deepening of a commitment. So that is in the air this week. So I, I hope that you have an amazing week. Know that you know you're still getting your stuff. If you're not on the newsletter, check the show notes in YouTube. Check the show notes in your podcast listening platform. I have all the links laid out for you um, for to get on the newsletter to you know to follow on Twitter for daily horoscopes and I do sign by sign readings on major cosmic events so just so you know and the Instagram all the things are all listed there and I'm here for you everything is going to be coming your way even though I'm not live in living color I'm pre-recorded and still in living color and if you want to see how I feng shuied my closet go check out the YouTube because it is now the backdrop and I am loving it <laughs> All right, have a wonderful week, folks. I will see you next week. Hey, one last thing before we go. Who are three people you could share this episode with? Who would benefit from learning astrology in real time? From learning how to work with the energy of the cosmos, from tracking the patterns and cycles, to seeing it in real time, in motion? Can you text them right now? Can you send that message and just say, I'm going to share this show with you because I think that you would really vibe with learning in this way. I would appreciate it. They would appreciate it. And you'll feel good knowing that you're spreading the love. Let's keep that high vibration going. I'll see you next week. Bye.